What is going on, everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. Again, another very unconventional intro coming to you from my car because we took a quick road trip to our local tractor supply. There she is, our local tractor supply. And no, I'm not in a handicap. So the reason why we're at Tractor Supply today is because I've got to pick up some alfalfa pellets. Now, alfalfa can play a huge role in your garden, and so that's what I want to talk about today as to how alfalfa can help you grow a bigger and healthier garden. So first, got to run in there and grab it. So come along with me and let's go get some. All right. <laughs> Scratch that idea. So apparently, Tractor Supply does have a pretty strict no filming policy. Uh, we did get our alfalfa meal, as you can see in the back there. We got our alfalfa, so mission accomplished. I just wish I could have shown you where it was in the store, but like I said, as soon as I brought my big camera in, the uh, the manager was like, um, sir, what are you doing with that? And I'm like, oh, I'm filming for my YouTube channel. She's like, uh, we have a no filming policy. I'm like, all right, sounds good. <laughs> so I'll see you guys back at the house. All right, we're back. And so I've got two different bags of alfalfa here. The one bag is a 40 pound bag of alfalfa pellets, and the other bag is a 50 pound bag of alfalfa cubes. Now, basically, they're both alfalfa, but the process in which they've been uh, treated is a little bit different. The alfalfa pellets are typically soaked in a uh, in like a water solution, and then they're compressed using high amounts of pressure. And the um, the alfalfa particles are usually quite a bit smaller, meaning there's more surface area. With alfalfa cubes. It's usually a little bit more of a raw product, still soaked in water, still compressed down with pressure, but a little bit larger. Larger animals are typically given the cubes, whereas things like rabbits and smaller animals are given the pellets. Now, bigger animals can eat the pellets as well. It's just for bulk and you know just uh, speed of consumption. A lot of people will feed their animals the cubes. But when it comes to the garden, there is a specific use for each one of these that I wanna highlight because alfalfa can play a huge role in having a healthier and, uh, and better growing garden. And it's such an inexpensive product. Now there are lots of fertilizers out there and lots of things will feed your garden. Things like coffee grounds are rich in nitrogen. Things like you know blood meal, bone meal. There's lots of different uh, fertilizers out there and soil amendments out there. But when it comes to a really inexpensive option, this 50 pound bag of alfalfa cubes ran me about $16. This 40 pound bag of alfalfa pellets ran me, I think, $15.20. So uh, both of them, you know, in that kind of uh, $15 to $17 range. And, uh, you know, for, for that 40 to 50 pounds of, of uh, material, that's pretty great. All right, so I really quick wanted to talk about alfalfa and the benefits that it can have in the garden. First of all, alfalfa is very high in nitrogen. So if you're looking to get a lot of green growth, a lot of leafy green growth, if you're growing things like lettuce or uh, other leafy green crops, they're gonna benefit very well uh, from some alfalfa. Now, if you're growing things like uh, carrots or radishes, alfalfa can actually kind of inhibit some of the root development because alfalfa does not have a lot of phosphorus or potassium. Now, alfalfa, uh, if you don't already know, is a, is a feed typically given to animals, um, things like you know, rabbits and goats and deer and uh, cows, sheep, a lot of different herbivores will eat alfalfa. And a lot of farmers have used alfalfa pellets in the winter months because uh, it's just a really good, just a really good dry storage feed for those animals. And it's got a lot of well-balanced nutrition. But uh, the, the thing is for us as gardeners is it's very high in nitrogen. So it's very, very good as a fertilizer and as a soil amendment. It also contains a lot of organic matter, which helps to break down and uh, actually loosen soil and break up uh, you know, heavy clay soil and things like that. So it is very good. Um, it's just that the applications vary based on what you get. And also it depends on how much work you're willing to put in. See these pellets here, these pellets are great for things like top dressing or uh, actually like fertilizing your plants. The reason why is because they're much smaller and they're pelletized. Now the process of, of turning them into pellets versus turning them into cubes is essentially the same. It's just depending on the material size and the pressure that is applied. So with uh, something like a pellet, what they're going to do is they're gonna take some very fine alfalfa shreds they're gonna soak them in a bunch of water, and then they're gonna force them through a pelletizer and really compress a ton of pressure to make them very small and pellet-like. 
Whereas with cubes, the cubes are much larger and they use much uh, more coarse or raw forms of alfalfa. You can actually see much more grass strands. Alfalfa is a grass. There's a lot more grass strands in here rather than the very, very small little particles here. So they are much, much different. And also uh, the, the blocks are much bigger because they apply much less water and it's just more, just a lot less pressure uh, than these pellets here because the surface area of this grass is, is much less. The surface area on these pellets is huge, and I love them because the surface area is so big. They're gonna hold onto water really well, they're gonna break down very fast, they're just gonna be a really good all-around fertilizer for your garden. But these alfalfa cubes have a great application as well, and we'll get into that. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about too with these applications is that uh, both alfalfa pellets and cubes are gonna have less nitrogen than the raw product. The raw product of alfalfa, because it's a grass, has a ton of nitrogen. Roughly about 10% by weight is just nitrogen. Whereas with these pellets and the cubes, you're going to lose some nitrogen because the soaking process. When, uh, when processors will take the alfalfa and soak it, a lot of the nitrogen that's available actually gets leached into the water. And so you lose about three to 4% of your nitrogen, of your plant available nitrogen, right into the water. And so uh, the pellets are gonna have less nitrogen than the cubes because the pellets take longer, so they take a longer soak time than the, than the cubes do. And so, and also the cubes are a more, much more whole product. So because they have less surface area, they break down a lot less, they leach a lot less. So if you're looking at just sheer nitrogen benefit, the cubes are gonna have about 1% more nitrogen than the alfalfa pellets. But again, it's kind of one of those pick your poison type, uh, type scenarios here, um, because the pellets are gonna have, in my opinion, a little bit more of a wide variety of uses than the cubes will. All right, so I first wanna start out with the pellets. And I love these pellets, they're so incredible. And I absolutely love just the fact that, uh, like I said, they're super versatile. As you can see, these pellets here are beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And the smell, the smell in these, it's just, it's so grassy, it's so, it reminds me of like a fresh spring morning almost. It's just very earthy, very delicious. Now these pellets here, because they have such a high surface area, they break down very quickly. But because they've been compressed so much through high pressure and water, they do have a tendency to, uh, to need to be soaked first before they can be used in the garden. So what I recommend doing is getting a, a tub like this, filling it up with water and soaking them. And that's really gonna help you to break down those, those alfalfa fibers, and you're actually gonna end up with an alfalfa mash. That, alfa, that, alf, that alfalfa mash is actually gonna be used far better in the garden as like a top dressing for fertilizer or a, uh, or a, uh, like a compost starter, things like that, because um, the, the nitrogen is gonna be far more readily available it's gonna break down much quicker. And also these pellets themselves are not gonna be whole raw pellets because one of the downsides to using these whole raw pellets is because the surface area is so large that if you just take a huge hunk of these, throw them underneath your plant, what's going to happen is the water from your soil is gonna combine with the bacteria in the soil and the compost in your soil. And it's actually gonna start breaking these down very quickly. And it can actually start to uh, uh, decompose faster than you want. And what happens is that actually generates heat. They get very hot and you don't want to have a, even a small little pile of alfalfa pellets below your plants as a fertilizer because they break down so quickly. The benefit to throwing them as a mash is that you can top dress far easier and also they break down much quicker so they don't generate the heat like they would if you just had uh, if you just had the raw pellet product. So it's gonna take down some of that potency by soaking it in the water and kind of reconstituting it, if you will. So that's one of the benefits to alfalfa pellets. And I love it because you can top dress it. You can use the water that comes off of it as a fertilizer tea. You can do so much with the uh, alfalfa pellets. Now the cubes, <laughs> now the cubes, and again, you know, you're gonna have a, an application for these, but it's much different than the pellets. Still, still the same great smell, I love it. It's just, it kinda smells like, I don't know, like a, like a really fresh, clean barn or like a hay field right after it's been cut. I don't know, if you've ever lived in the country and they're cutting hay, you know that smell, it's fantastic, I love it. 
So the downside to these is that they're so big. So what is the application for these? Do we still use these, these as a fertilizer? And the answer is no, I would not use these as a fertilizer. Now you could theoretically soak them in the water, reconstitute them, use them as a mash, just like you would the pellets. But I much rather prefer to use uh, the pellets as a fertilizer just because of the, the surface area. These are much more coarse and they're gonna break down a whole lot slower. Even after you reconstitute them, the, the, um, the particles of alfalfa are gonna be much smaller in the, in the pellet form, meaning they're gonna break down much faster, feed your soil much faster, and build your soil much faster. So come on over to my compost pile so I can show you the application for the cubes. So the use for these alfalfa cubes that I absolutely love, and personally, I prefer this over almost any method because we have the space to do it, and that's to compost them. Now, it might seem like a waste to take this beautiful end product and just only to buy it from the store to throw it in your compost pile, but let me tell you, this is an incredible, absolutely incredible compost starter. The reason why these make such a good compost starter is because of the nitrogen. You see, one of the biggest problems that a lot of gardeners have is that they have a lot of material that breaks down, but it takes so long to break it down that it discourages a lot of gardeners from ever composting again. Or if you do get compost, it's only like once in the spring and once in the fall, and you really only have like two seasons where you have good amounts of compost. And it's a struggle to convert a lot of organic matter into readily available compost in a short period of time. This will solve all of that. Now you could throw them in whole like that. You could throw them in whole, but you can also soak them down and reconstitute them. Then use the mash, the mash that you would get just the same way as you would use the pellets, take the mash and dump the mash into your compost pile. That's gonna have all that water, which is rich in nitrogen, all of the, um, all of the reconstituted uh, alfalfa pulp back into the compost pile as well. But the thing that you're gonna get is all of that nitrogen. And bacteria, especially composting bacteria and aerobic bacteria, use nitrogen. And these nitrogen, uh, or the nitrogen in the soil is utilized by the bacteria to break down organic matter. And that's one of the biggest reasons why a lot of gardeners don't have what they consider to be a hot compost pile. A hot compost pile gets hot because of all the aerobic activity that the bacteria is, is doing. And so when they're consuming the organic material, they need a source for nitrogen. And that's one of the most common reasons why compost piles will go cold or they'll slow down or they really won't compost at all. And they'll just kind of turn into this, this kind of like stagnant pile that takes years to break down completely and ends up going anaerobic. Anaerobic meaning lacking oxygen. And that's because there's just not the bacterial activity like you'd have in a high nitrogen environment. Now, the final thing that I will note is that make sure that when you're purchasing your alfalfa pellets or cubes, that there is no binding agents. It should tell you right on the back if it contains any fats, any oils, any binders, because that actually helps to bind the pellets together. Now, if the pellets look waxy and they look like they have a coating on them, don't worry. That just sometimes happens when they compress the pellets down, they'll get kind of a waxy texture. That does not mean they're coated. The back of the bag will tell you if there's any binders or coatings. That's all you need to look for. Also, see if you can get some sun aged. I really prefer sun dried or, or you know, dry aged alfalfa. And the reason why is because when alfalfa ferments, what happens is it actually will end up killing a lot of the weed seeds that are found in the alfalfa. Because remember, alfalfa is a grass and you don't want grass seed in your garden. And so the really nice thing is that when you dry age or, or sun age uh, the alfalfa, they pile it up. It actually ferments in these big piles and actually allows the, the, um, the seeds, a lot of the seeds become inviolable. So you get a lot less seeds that sprout from a dry aged or a sun aged alfalfa. There's a lot of different alfalfa brands or uh, kind of combinations. They might have alfalfa and Timothy grass, alfalfa and, uh, and oats. They might have alfalfa and buckwheat. You know, there's just a lot of different options because feed has a different uh, nutri you know, nutrient compositions. Get just the raw alfalfa. It's gonna have the highest amount of nitrogen. It's gonna have the lowest amount of weed seeds. And it's gonna have you know, very little, if any, weed seeds in this versus some of your other combinations that might have more weed seeds than others just because of the, the way that they're processed. So that's all I got for you today. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. And we'll catch you all later. See ya. Bye.